Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, I completely forgot to talk about this sort of thing because it's been making its rounds on the YouTube and the political sphere as far as that goes. And it's in relation to, like, what has happened, like, recently as far as that goes. So, anyways, um... I used to watch Young Turks before they gotten all woke and shit, you know. And I think it was around, you know, 2018, as far as that goes, once they started uh, going gaga over AOC. That's where I started to bail from um, the Young Turks, as far as that goes. You know, and in, in essence, I had bailed on, you know, not just the Young Turks, but also, like, David Pakman, Kyle Kalinske, and Tom Hartman, because they were all, like, praising AOC up and down, as far as that goes, but she's just a little unhinged, as far as that goes. So, anyways, um... Just to put uh, the setup here. So, anyways, um, the other thing I'm gonna have to add uh, here is the whole thing with Anna Kasparian and how she had, you know, really lost her shit. When it came to that, and it was, you know, the usual shrieking harpy kind of thing. It is a bit hilarious when you look at it in, in the grand scheme of things of that sort. But, you know, as far as that goes, it, there was a bit of, like, pop calling the kettle black in a way, because in some ways... You know, a lot of those people there don't really care about, you know, the woke kids and all that. They just only want their money to contribute to, you know, the whole Justice League or I forgot what they call it again. You know, the Justice Democrats or Wolf Pack and all of that. But then it's like the other thing again. I think this was just, you know, the woke mob had probably had co-opted TYT, David Pacman, and all of these other people there. And that was one of the reasons I had left at that point. You know, because then they're not going to really bring anybody good to replace, you know, the neoliberal stooges that are like on their last leg as far as that goes. They're just going to bring these woke dunderheads who believe in millions of genders and you can change your gender like you can change your clothes, that sort of shit. You know, and as I said before about it is that they make the transgender community look bad, you know, by making them look kind of ridiculous in a way. And, at best, harmful at worst, as far as that goes. So, anyways, um, the other thing I kind of wanted to add on to here is that, you know, in some ways, they are kind of lining their pockets you know, when you look at TYT or David Pacman and all of that, but but sometimes it is kind of expected in some ways. You know. And in a way, I could also say the same for like, you know, you know, when it was like Luke Rakowski or the Tim Pool's IRL podcast or or Adam Krigler's uh IRL podcast in some ways there that it could also be just as a 
guilty of being grifting and all of that. You know, just as much as like the TYT, David Pakman, and Kyle Kalinske, and Tom Hartman, as far as that goes. But in some ways, it, it is kind of expected that certain people are going to graft and all of that. And that's just why I am kind of have this, you know, this been there, done that, I'm not surprised kind of thing there. You know. But that's just how it is. Sometimes grifters got to grift. You know. And it's just, you know, a way for them to at least get the most bang out of their buck. Yeah. So. Anyways. There's all these like sirens. And all that coming down the main street. So that's going to interrupt me. So I apologize for that. So. Anyways. Um. Considering all of that, it all kind of depends on a lot of other things, you know, on how much you're willing to uh, sell yourself at that point. And it's, it's sort of the whole Faustian bargain. And I just did not know that's what the actual term is called, Faustian's bargain. You know, if anybody had ever read the story of Faust, you know, and in a way, you know, one uh, video game that has the greatest example of Faustian's bargain is uh, Shadow of the Colossus. And anybody who ever watch or play the game of Shadow of the Colossus was, would know what I'm talking about. You know, how that character wanted to reanimate his dead lover, Mono. But the price he had to do there was killing those 16 colossi and then he ends up getting cursed by his doorman in the end and and, you know, although he, Dorman did kept his bar, end of the bargain as far as, uh, as far as reanim reanimating, uh, or reviving, resurrecting, whatever you would call it, Mono, but in the price that Wander is turned into a baby in the end. Yeah. So, and considering all of that, yeah, you know, that's kind of like the price you have to pay in order to get up to like the upper echelons of society of that sort. You know, and the price that is, you know, betraying people or or betraying your own principles of that sort. You know, it's like that whole, um, uh, that whole episode of, um, Black Mirror, you know, the, the 15 million demerits, you know, what happened with being in the end of that sort, you know, he got the, that larger spot there by, you know, betraying his principles of that sort, and, and in a way, that's also like the whole reasoning why certain people, you know, don't necessarily get anywhere in life sometimes because they they don't really want to give up on some of their principles as far as that goes. You know, to get to get to the upper echelons of society or something like that. And there's always like the reasoning why certain people complain about that is simply because they're unwilling to sacrifice their principles or 
and whatnot to get there. But that's like the whole price you pay. You know, to become famous of that sort or or to become you know as far as like the business elite, the political elite of that sort of thing, you have to make certain bargains here and there and and that's just how it is. Why when it comes to like some of these sort of issues political issues that are like dangling carrots in the way because you know they know they know that that's a way to to keep their job to keep everything of that sort you know but it's like one of the things I had said before about that sort of thing I think if I had said this at that point what I'm saying now, back when I was 20 or 19, you know, people would have thought I was just being crazy. You know, being, you know, that. But it's, it's the reality of things there. And that is sort of the whole reason why I don't take part in that, you know. Because I know it's a sham. I know all of that is just a sham and all that. And... I would rather just be left alone by that, you know, if it means to be comfortable and all that, because I don't really want to stress myself out into a pretzel or whatnot just to gain up another rung of the latter society as far as that goes. I'm happy where I'm at, you know, and you know, if that's just me being lazy or whatnot, then so be it, you know, besides, I have that whole disability that has an excuse, I have all this other stuff as an excuse, it would, some of those people like that would have wanted to take that away from me, you yeah. know, if they would, take that away from me they'll be seen as monsters so I put them in a, in that kind of curious position yeah and sometimes I think that's the case the best way to win over the ruling elite and all that is to make them look bad in the process to make them look like they're monsters that that is no point in denying that sort of thing it's the whole reason why, you know, some of these dictators and stuff like that end up, you know, being reviled in the end. Because somebody manages to expose them for what they are, you know. And if it's like, you know, any of these people would have realized that after they're gone... Their legacies being reviled. If they knew about that sort of thing ahead of time. I think most of these dictators. Most of these sort of people that are like that. Would think twice. Yeah. So anyways. Talk to you guys later.